Welcome back to Where You Live. And uh, we are brought to you by Extreme Exteriors. We're broadcasting from the Concierge Landscape Studios. And it's so good to have you with us uh, today. Uh, I am uh, joined uh, as uh, with uh, Dan Greenstein as my guest uh, co-host. Uh, Dan is an attorney from Burnick Lifson. Folks, you've uh, heard Dan uh, on our show many times uh, in the past. And uh, we're going to be covering a story now that's coming out of Florida. And uh, this is, I think, a really uh, unique turn, a unique uh, uh, law that one lawmaker would like to see uh, established in Florida. Uh, the gentleman is uh, State Senator Chris Smith, and uh, it would have a huge impact on condominium associations. Um, the bill uh, specifically states, this is uh, Senate Bill 706, and it says that the share of the common expenses of a unit in the condominium, which is in foreclosure, may not be assessed against other units in the condominium. So in other words, uh, uh, if you have 40 units um, in a homeowners association, you have five homeowners who went into foreclosure. If this bill were passed and that were law here in Minnesota, for example, then the other 35 homeowners couldn't uh, make up the difference so that they could continue to pay their bills with the association, even though they have those obligations. Dan, what do you think of this? I think it's probably a a good person with a bad idea. And I'm thinking perhaps this senator is not that familiar with the finances in associations. Oh, I, I think it's very clear that this uh, person does not understand uh, homeowner associations, how they work. Um, I got to admit, you know, this last year, uh, even in the, the with the Minnesota State Legislature, we had to... to uh, Go to bat a number of us in the industry over uh, some bills. Uh, there was uh, the the one bill that wanted to uh, prohibit associations and management companies from being able to, uh, in an emergency situation, go in and take care of a maintenance emergency right, if the person right. hadn't given uh, permission. Right. Uh, I mean, uh, well-meaning but uh, ill-advised. I, I mean, there there this is these were people who had. I guess I'm surprised after all these years, HOAs are not that new. And uh, people, you would think, uh, would go to other reliable sources to try and find out if these really are issues or if there's other things that are, are going on here. That's true. You know, what's interesting in this article is it says that the senator's bill was designed to prevent further owners from becoming delinquent as a result of having to pick up the assessment shortfall. Well, you know, it may be in a vacuum in a perfect world that makes some sense, but, you know, uh, the the reality is that everyone who lives in an association has got an investment there. And probably one of the last things you want to do is see the investment fail because a bill like this prevents the association from levying and collecting enough money to run the association. Yeah. I mean, tr try and imagine, uh, if you can, uh, what the vendors would say. What would the insurance company say when the association said, you know, well, we can't collect any more, so uh, we're going to give you um, uh, 80% of what we owe. Right. We know we right. owe you more, um, but uh, you keep us insured. Well, and the other <laughs> thing, too, there, there's there's – there's something amiss about this. Be you know, in Minnesota, very rarely does a declaration in an association provide that if they've got, let's say, five delinquent homeowners who are in foreclosure, that the association can assess all of the other owners to cover the shortfall. The, f the truth is, though, the money from those five delinquent owners is not being paid to the association. The association has less money, and as a result, they can do less maintenance, repair, or replacement of their capital improvements. Now, if they don't have enough money, what do they do? 
they try to have a special assessment. They mm -hmm. go to the owners. The owners vote whether or not to pass a special assessment that requires them to kick in money for certain specific mm -hmm. capital improvements. Yeah. You know, w one of the things that seems to be always missed when you see a law like this uh, initiated is the understanding of what the organization of a homeowner association, what it is. First and foremost, it is a corporation. These are a group of people who have incorporated That's and are in are together owners of this entity called uh, the HOA. Yes, it is. But one one little difference: it's a nonprofit corporation. So the goal is not to take money out of the association and take it home and put it in your pocket. The goal is to have enough money to keep up. Um, to maintain, repair, and replace all of the association uh, common expenses so that the market value stays as high as possible. And, you know, a lot of times I think it's that fact that a lot of uh, lawmakers fail to realize. I think they uh, take a look at homeowner associations somehow as a for-profit entity, and they're thinking, well, they've taken more money than they needed at other times. And that you're right, that's not the case. As a nonprofit entity, the association is charged with the, the responsibility of only taking in what is needed to meet the obligations for it to run. If it uh, takes in more than it should, uh, by law, there's only two things you can do. One is you need to apportion that out back to the members. Give it back. Give it back. Or um, uh, there is also special uh, situations where if the reserves are underfunded. They could they could also designate that for the reserves for capital replacement. Right, and use it in the future again to maintain the property. Yes, but uh, the the idea, uh, you know, of um, well, we can't let these people pay any more uh, is going to do nothing but probably cause the ruin of the association. It's 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 problematic. W one of the things that I find interesting is I, I guess I'm reading into this new law they're proposing, and it says the share of the common expenses of a unit which is in foreclosure may not be assessed against other units in the condominium. Right now, the law or the commonplace language in the declarations must allow the board or the association to levy those delinquent amounts against all of the other owners mm -hmm. in the association. I find that a bit troubling, yeah. too, without the vote of the homeowners. Yes. And one of the reasons I find it troubling is in a condominium, the owners do not get a voice in who owns a condominium with them. And yet this would seem to say that, um, you know, if these people are not financially sound or they become non-sound in their finances, that uh, these other owners are required to make up the shortfall. Very interesting. Yeah. Uh, you know, we've... Uh, it was in the Star Tribune just a few months ago. Uh, there was a property out in Oakdale. This very same thing has happened, and I think we're beginning to see this in an increasing way. Again, goes back to the way the economic condition of the country is right now. There are uh, there are people who've lost jobs, people who have uh, been able to uh, keep up with their mortgage, their uh, ability to pay the association, foreclosures taken place. Uh, people are in a world of hurt. The association is in a world of hurt too, and uh, you can't. You in a bill like this seems to just say, "I just want to just, uh, I just want to block out that there's uh, any uh, issue or problem at all." Right, exactly. And you know what this bill seems to be saying is that you you, you can't make up those losses. By living against the other yeah. homeowners, yeah. and what other what other source of income is there? Uh, y you're right. There is no other source of income if it's a nonprofit organization because they can't go somewhere else to get to uh, bring in income to bring in a profit. Um, it this also goes back to uh, I guess a fundamental issue with a lot of people, and that is people really don't understand what their obligation is when they are purchasing a home in an association and you need to one of the reasons why we have such a big issue with the state 
uh, saying there needs to be a period of time where homeowners have to look at these disclosure documents and review the governing documents of the association, the financial condition and all of that, is because they need to weigh whether or not uh, they have the ability or the desire to join themselves at the hips financially with all these other people. Exactly. And, you know, in fairness to those new homeowners who have never lived in an association before, you're given a two- or three-inch stack of governing documents and financial documents of your association. And unless you've lived in an association before or have some sophistication about how they work, it's very difficult to read through that information and understand as a practical matter what that's going to mean to you. And at the risk of, you know, ringing my own bell here, I would really suggest that anybody who is buying into an association for the first time take the documents to an attorney Mm -hmm. or someone very familiar with this type of documentation and go through it. Have them explain it to you so you know what you're getting into. Let's uh, take a a little bit of time to talk about that, Dan. We've got to take a break right now. Folks, when we come back, we're going to uh, discuss what are the obligations a homeowner has before buying that home in an association. More on this after these messages. 